Welcome everybody to the latest episode of the Physics Corner. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Sorolla. Today we're taking another look at uh, images through lenses, but the first time we did this in a previous video, it was a converging lens. Let's try it with a diverging lens. Now, the difference between converging and a diverging, to remind everybody, is that when light passes through a converging lens, the rays are bent inwards. When a diverging lens, it's outwards. So, we've got two different ways to go about this particular problem. Let's see how that might work. So, the numbers are almost identical, with one important exception, uh, to the previous uh, example we did. So, uh, there's a separate video on converging lenses, and uh, I'll let you watch that. If you want to see how I derive a particular formula I'm going to use, that's the place to go. I'm not going to repeat the derivation here to save some time. But let's imagine we have an object that is seven and a half centimeters from a lens. Each of these big notches represents five centimeters. So there, there, and there like that. And uh, since it's seven and a half centimeters, I've got in the middle between those two notches right there. Okay, the focal length of the diverging lens is five centimeters. Now, light passes through a lens. So we would think in other circumstances that the focal point, the place where the lens, the light uh, will converge, should be on the opposite side of the lens. But this isn't a converging lens. This is a diverging lens. And so what happens instead is that light passing through the focal point, if you will, of a diverging lens is going to split apart. And that position is on the same side of the lens as the object is. So this is the focal point right here. That's different than it was for a converging lens. So it's a little bit of a different situation. So that's the difference. What means, or what it means mathematically, is that we really need to place a negative sign on the focal length. So the convention is to remind everybody, because light passes through lenses, that if you have an object, say, on the left-hand side, then everything that passes through on the right-hand side is positive. But if the focal point is here, that means then that the focal length, which is from the lens to the focal point, is a negative. So in both places, I left space to do that on purpose, uh, we have a negative focal length. All right, so we'll do the math first, then we'll go ahead and play with the, uh, the pictures. All right, so let's take a look. Now, in the past, in the previous videos, we have seen that the general thin lens equation looks like this. One over the focal length equals one over the object distance, so that's SO, plus one over the image distance, SI. And what we're interested in is SI. Now again, the solution is presented in a different video, but the mathematical part of it looks like this. So if I were to solve the algebra for SI, I would get this solution. Now by the way, why would I not just have the solution to start with, is because sometimes we're not searching for SI. We might be searching for one of these other items. And so, we'll, again, as we usually do in physics, we have a generalized equation, which we then adapt to an individual situation. So, that's what we've done here. All right, let's go ahead and plug in our numbers and see what happens. Now, in the converging case, this was a positive number, but it's not positive, it's negative here. So, let's see how it goes on. So, SO is... 7.5 centimeters, and F is a negative 5 centimeters, right there. Now on the bottom, it's SO, which is 7.5 centimeters, minus a negative 5 centimeters, like that. And that negative sign, therefore, has some serious consequences, right? So 5 times 7.5 is 37.5. So up here we have this number, but there's a negative sign, so let's keep that, all right? In the denominator, in the bottom, it's 7.5 minus a negative 5, and when you subtract the negative, of course, it's the same as adding. So 7.5 plus 5, which is 12.5, like that. And this number is positive. Positive plus uh, another positive, really, gives you total positive. So what pops out of it? Uh, 37 and a half divided by 12 and a half is 3. There's a negative sign. 
and one of these centimeters cancels out that centimeter, so SI is a negative three centimeters. Now, what's the meaning of the solution? First off, negative three centimeters means that our picture should have the image end up right about here. We'll see if that plays out, right? So that's one thing. Second thing is, it's on the left-hand side. It's on the same side as the object is. That's the meaning of the negative sign, okay? So it's on the same side as the object. All right, what about magnification? How large can we expect the image to be compared to the original object? Well, the formula also is still the same. Magnification is a negative SI over SO, okay? Well, then a negative of a negative three centimeters here and a positive 7.5 centimeters for the object distance. Notice that negative, negative, multiply two negatives together, you get a positive. Three to by 7.5 is four tenths. So it's a positive, and I'm going to put the positive sign in front to emphasize that, 0.4. Right. So, again, some uh, a point worth talking about briefly, or going over briefly. Notice that magnification is smaller than 1. That is possible. Okay. Magnification does not automatically mean you get a larger thing in optics. What magnification means is the ratio of the size of the image to the size of the original object. And it's possible to have a smaller image than what the object was. That's a legit possible thing. So that's what we see, all right? So what we'll expect is that our image will be on the left-hand side, the same side of the from the lens as the object is, and it should be noticeably smaller, less than half the size. All right, so that's the numerical solution. And as far as numbers are concerned, if those are the numbers were given, that's what we get. How would we sketch this particular case? So uh, first one that's easiest to do is to sketch or draw a line, a ray, going through the center of the lens. Now again, we are assuming that the lens is thin. That's not stated explicitly, but that's the uh, assumption here. And when you have a thin lens, the ray from the top of the object that passes through the middle of the lens can be assumed to go through unaffected. That's the only place it does that, but it does do that. So let's sketch that. So from the top of our object to the middle of our lens. Again, I'm sketching this by hand. If you, by the way, there are computer programmer uh, priorities that uh, real professionals would use to deal with this kind of thing. All right, second one's a little bit subtle, but it's there and it's possible to use. Now for a converging lens, if we draw a line that's parallel to the normal, and again, this line that goes through the middle is a normal line uh, because it is perpendicular to the direction of the lens. So, square, you know, there we are, there's our 90 degree angle, so it is a normal line. Uh, the deal for a converging lens was draw a line that's parallel, a ray that's parallel to the normal, and it goes through the focal point. This isn't that, this is a diverging lens, so how does that play out? We still draw a line that's parallel. So let's do that. Let's draw a ray that's parallel. So do something like this, okay? Now, in the case of the converging lens, we go through the focal point, but this isn't that. This is a diverging lens. What does that mean? Diverging lenses mean you go away from the focal point. So the focal point is here. I get here to the middle of my diverging lens, and the actual physical ray goes off like that. And now you can see that this ray and this ray are diverging. They're splitting apart, okay? Now, this doesn't mean that you don't have an image formed, but it does mean it's going to have kind of a funky sort of interpretation, if you will. So these two rays obviously never meet each other. It doesn't happen. But let's put ourselves in a position of someone that's over here looking at what these rays are doing. So now, when a person or device, for that matter, looks at a ray, you don't see the kink. You don't see this turn. What instead happens to appear is that the ray simply goes appears to go backwards in a straight line coming from some original source. This ray, that's pretty obvious. If you just backtrack, you go straight back to the original uh, head of our object, and that's fine. But what about this ray? 
if we backtrack this rate, it goes back through the focal point. That's where we had lined it up, right? So let's do that. Now, because this is not a real ray, the actual ray is going off this way. When I sketch this backwards, I'm going to sketch it as a dashed line to represent the fact that it's not actually real. I'm not even going to put an arrow on it for that purpose as well. So if you are over here, which you have to be because this is a lens, right? If you're over here, you're not seeing anything. The light from the object passes through the lens. So you have to be on this side to see the light. If you look here, you see this ray appears to be coming from that direction. And when you have these two rays cross, when this real ray here and this virtual, this ray that isn't real, crosses here, that is where the image appears to form. And so if I sketch a arrowhead there, that's where it looks like my image will be. Now again, I am sketching this more or less freehand. Yes, I'm borrowing a ruler to help me do that, but it's still a freehand sketch. And so if you were to use a real program or do this on computer, you'd get a much better result. But if you look, the image distance was a negative three centimeters. It has to be to the left of the original or the uh, lens. And that's what you see. Here's the lens and oh, go to the left some distance. Now from here to here was five centimeters. So I didn't get quite to three, perhaps. You can, so just a tiny bit more than halfway. So eh, a little short of that, but still not too bad. The other part is the magnification. Magnification is a positive 0.4. So a little less than half the size of the object. And I think we can make that argument pretty well. This arrowhead is about a little less than half the size of the original object arrowhead. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And more importantly, or just as important, there's a positive sign here, which means that the image is right side up. So the image is pointing right side up. Now, a very common mistake or misunderstanding for students while we're drawing these kinds of pictures, by the way, is to have that arrowhead or image just kind of floating in midair somehow. You have to tie the base, the tail of the arrowhead, to the normal line. So notice the object's tail is here in the normal. So is the tail of my image arrowhead. They both have to connect. You can't have the image over here, or over here kind of floating free. It must connect up, the tail must connect up with the line. In fact, that's a way to kind of anchor your drawing, to know that you've placed it in the correct position, okay? So, but in any case, notice this. Now, in the case of a converging image for the same numbers otherwise, we had a image that showed up over here. That's not what we have. We have an image showing up here. So what is it? Is it a real or a virtual image? Now, again, a real image is the case where actual real rays meet and the real rays meet at a point and then you can see the image, whether it's you or a device of some kind. If the rays don't physically meet, but it just looks like they meet, that's what we call a virtual image. And that's what we have here. The actual physical rays, this and this one that pass through the lens, never come together. But if you're over here looking this way towards where the rays come from, it appears that the rays meet over here. They don't actually meet. They never meet. But it looks like they did. Therefore, this is what we call a virtual image. So not a real image. By the way, we're not doing it here, but to uh, give you a, another taste of a virtual image, you probably do this almost every morning. Uh, take a peek at yourself in a bathroom mirror. Bathroom mirror gives you a virtual image. When you look at it, you see a reflection of yourself, of course, uh, it fully you know, to scale, if you will. You're the same size in the mirror as you are, say, in front of the mirror, if you want all that. But you couldn't actually travel behind the mirror to see your to image, right? The rays bounce off the surface of the mirror. And so there's a great example of a virtual image. You, you see an image, but you can't actually tra travel to where the rays would gather because they don't. They don't do that. This is another example of that kind of idea. Now, where would you use this kind of lens in practice? Not all, but uh, lots of people that have uh, vision problems 
will often have a corrective lens with this kind of shape to change the position of where the image should be compared to where it actually is forming. Okay. We're not doing that here. That's an extra step of complexity to talk about, uh, say, eyeglasses and such. But this is, would be a starting point for that kind of discussion. Right. So that is an image using a diverging lens instead of a converging lens. So our technical staff is Sydney Gautra and Sophia Turner. Funding for this series comes from the University of Mississippi and University of Southern Mississippi. I am your host as always, Dr. Christopher Zorola, thanking everybody for your attention and clear skies.